Hey guys, today I'm back in Besiege and I wanted to try making an engine powered plane. Now to mix things up a bit, I wanted to try using the spark plug mod to create my engine. So let's get right into it. So I'm starting off in the sandbox and the first thing I did was put down a spark plug because really I just wanted to mess with it and see what it's all about. So I had a few settings with ignition points and power and I kind of understood what was going to happen, but not entirely, so I decided to put down a piston facing directly at the spark plug just to see what would happen. And you can see it's getting compressed entirely into this wooden block. I was very surprised at how much it was getting compressed, so clearly it had a bit of power, but I wanted to see exactly how much power it had, and for that I just put down a wooden log on a swivel joint, and after just setting some of the ignition point parameters, you can see as I rotate the block into the way of the spark plug, it gets pushed away a lot. Now I was getting no rotation from this though, because I had no crankshaft or anything like that. So what I did is put down a smooth surface block, and I just wanted to go for a really simple test, just a single piston engine here. Well, first of all, just to see if it was possible, but also just to see exactly how to tune the spark plug. Now I put a wooden block in the way of the spark plug, so Originally I was going to hook it up to the crankshaft and it was just temporarily put there to set everything up. But I decided to give it a quick test here to see how it would react. And it just shot through this wooden block in front of it, you can see here. And it went way across the map. So at that point, I was really confident this had enough power to at least be a car and probably be a plane. So I finished up the crankshaft just like this. And it was mostly working except that I accidentally made the crank part of it a little bit too long. So after shortening it, giving another test here, and it all seemed good except the piston's able to slide out of its cylinder area because I have no sidewalls. So I put those in place and giving it a quick test here, you can see it's quite crazy. So I just shrunk the walls of the crankshaft a little bit to hopefully make it rotate a bit better and the piston ended up flying straight out of there. So I lowered the power from the spark plug from 1000 to 100. I have no idea what those units are. And you can see here it's much more tame. So after tuning the ignition points and the power for just a little bit, I ended up getting this sort of rotation. It wasn't continuous, but it was pretty good. So I added in another piston. I was gonna start working on a simple dual piston setup here. It's actually exactly what I had in my last video when I was doing simple testing with the steam cannons. And actually here I have the exact same problem I had where I needed two swivel joints in the center one for each piston, but ends up binding up a little bit. So I increased the size of the wooden blocks to give them a better fit in the engine, and it seemed to rotate okay. It was a little rough though. So to hopefully fix it a bit more, what I did is replace the wooden blocks with ballast. I was thinking they may slide a bit better. And I also replaced the smooth surface blocks with half pipes. Now smooth surface blocks are apparently not actually smooth. They just look smooth, but half pipes are actually low friction. So it should allow the pistons to easily slide on them. So after I got those half pipes and ballast put in place, I accidentally didn't hook it up to the crankshaft quite right. And you can see here it gets kind of slid from side to side. It's not doing anything productive, but I thought it was kind of funny. So I left it in the video. And then here I I actually hooked it up to the crankshaft like I was supposed to, and it's actually rotating pretty fast. I was surprised by this, the amount of power it had just for two pistons. But the crankshaft was still swinging back and forth quite a bit, so to fix that problem, I added another swivel joint on top of the crankshaft and pinned it in place. So this will pin the top of the crankshaft to hopefully keep it on the same line the entire time. And after I did that, it actually didn't seem to be rotating as well, but the crankshaft seemed to be much more stable, so I was willing to take that trade off, especially since now I was going to be adding in two more pistons. Now the engine setup I'm going for here is an X pattern, and for this I need four pistons hooked up in a, well, X. So to do this, I need to add in two more swivel joints to the crankshaft, and then connect those up to the two other pistons, and it seemed to be working, except the largest piston here ended up bending backwards quite a bit because the amount of wood blocks on it, and got caught on the half pipe. So I used a few more bracing pieces to fix that, and the engine seemed to be rotating fine, but just as a preventative measure, I braced the other pistons as well to make them a bit stronger, and once I did that, it also seemed to be rotating fine. So I started working on turning this into a car. Now, it's not exactly what the end goal was, but if it could power a car, I figured it was definitely going to be able to power a plane, and it's actually pretty easy to convert it into a car, so I figured I'd do that. Now starting with these small wheels here, the engine's swinging back and forth a lot to the point where I thought it might tip over. So I put the wheels further out to hopefully stop it from wobbling as bad, but here you can see it's actually wobbling so badly the wheels end up coming off the ground sometimes. Now I put a counterbalance in the engine using some wood blocks like this, and it seemed to cut down the wobbling a bit, but there was still more wobbling than I'd like, and in a plane I figured that might get pretty obnoxious, especially when I'm trying to control it. So I replaced the wood blocks with the ballast. This actually does nothing to improve its stability, but hopefully it's going to make it a little bit lighter if I could do it this way. And it seemed to be a little bit too light, so I increased its mass to 10 units, and now it would actually seem to be too heavy. And you can see as the ballast rotates around, it takes the entire car with it from side to side. 
So I decreased its mass to about 5 units and also braced the engine so the wheels a little bit better. And once I did that, you can see here the wobbling's not gone, but it's definitely cut down a lot. So I figured that was probably good enough. Now I put a gear on the end of a wheel here, and this is actually the exact same setup I did in my last video to connect the output of the engine to the wheels, and I'm just doing this because it's really simple. But I noticed while I was doing this, this spark plug wasn't igniting at all. And I was a little confused by this, but I decided just to ignore it for now because I figured it might solve itself. So I connected up the output of the engine using a 4 bar linkage right on top of the gear, and you can see here it starts to rotate, but the ballast in the end of the engine ends up slamming into it, and that's going to be a problem. So to shorten the counterbalance of the engine just by a single block, you can see they slip right past each other, and it all seems to be fine. So to fix that one spark plug so that it'll actually fire, I replaced the ballast with a wood block, and for some reason this fixed the problem. I have no idea why that ever mattered, but now it's working. So for a quick test in the air here, you can see as the engine rotates, it also rotates the wheel. So I deleted the pin that was holding it up, and gave it a test on the ground. So I have to manually crank the engine to start it, that's fine though. And once I do that, the engine starts rotating, and it's definitely much slower under load, but it's still decently fast, especially forwards here, I'm actually getting quite a bit of power. So again, a car was definitely not the final goal, the final goal of this is to make a plane. So I deleted all of the stuff I put on this to turn it into a car, and then just for fun, I put down four propellers like this, and just wanted to see how well it would perform. So, kind of like I expected, it didn't come off the ground, and I think it's just because the engine is way too heavy. So to start solving this problem, I deleted a lot of the wood pieces, I think I deleted almost all of them to be honest, and replaced them with ballasts and braces. Now ballasts are great because you can set their weight, so I could just set them to be extremely light, and then use braces to hold them together, which are also pretty light, and overall I could probably honestly cut the weight of the engine down by probably like 70 or 80 percent just by doing this. Now it sort of became a fun game of exactly how much weight I could remove before it just wouldn't work, and in fact here I actually put in some ballasts underneath the spark plugs, but I realized I didn't need them at all since the spark plugs you could directly brace to, so after deleting those I just put in a bunch of braces to hold it all together, and I also wanted to use as few braces as possible, but also enough that it wasn't going to be entirely unstable. And once I got that, I gave it a quick test here, and it was, you know, wobbling a lot, but it seemed to be kind of holding together. So I removed even more wood pieces from the pistons themselves. And after removing all of those, I only had just a few left, and all of them were pretty much necessary, or there was really no point in removing them. So I took the engine, I rotated it 90 degrees up, rotated it 45 degrees, and got my X shape that looks nice, and started working on the plane. Now for this I needed to put in a couple wheels, so I put some wheels in like this, but you can see it's actually still front heavy and tips over, so I did move the wheels further forwards. After making sure just to brace them to the front of the plane and the back of the plane, I put in some back wheels as well. I didn't really want to show that though since it's exactly the same process, but here if I give it a quick run, you see it actually moves forwards pretty quickly. I mean it wasn't that fast, but it was much faster than I was expecting. So to hopefully increase the speed of the propeller, what I was going to do is add in a gear ratio and hopefully get a larger speed on the output. Now I connected up my small gear incorrectly here, and you can see it's just rotating with the large gear. So after making sure to brace it to the spark plugs instead of to the piece that's rotating, if I slow down time here, you can see the small gear ends up rotating faster than the big gear. So I made sure to put my propeller on that, and I just went for a simple two-blade design like this. I wanted to see if it'd work any better, and it seemed to rotate actually about as fast as the other one did. But I figured it was an unfair test since I only gave it half the propellers, so I put four on, and it seemed to not want to move at all, actually. Now, I figured I must have done something wrong here, and in fact, when I checked it out, one of the blades I had mirrored, and once I fixed that and it started up the engine, you can see here it's rotating maybe a little bit faster than it was before, but it's kind of surprised because the engine seemed to be moving slower as if it was getting loaded down by the propeller. But the engine I knew had a lot of power, so it just didn't seem to add up quite right. And gears in Besiege are always weird, so I figured the problem was most likely just that. You can't really have gear ratios like that, and not that it was actually loading down the engine. I tried a few other propeller designs. One of them was this triple blade design, and it didn't seem to move faster at all. In fact, I may have been even moving slower. So I instead went for a larger propeller like this, and it deleted the other two propellers on the outside, and I was moving a lot faster than I was before. So this was at least a good start. And because that worked so well, I decided to increase the propellers once again, made them 50% bigger. And then that happened. What I did is push the propeller blades further out from the center of the propeller, and it didn't seem to be freaking out, but it was hitting the ground now, so what I had to do was lower the wheels just a little bit to get it further off the ground, and this seemed to work, but I was kind of getting diminishing returns at this point, and it didn't seem to be moving that much faster. So just to try a few other things out to make sure I wasn't missing something obvious, what I did was try making my own propeller blades using these wing panels, and this seemed to not really be that much better. It seemed to be rotating faster, but it didn't seem to create as much thrust. So I tried these really big wings as well, I didn't get the positioning quite 
fight right, but it was good enough. And they also didn't seem to be rotating that fast. In fact, they seem to be worse than the small wing panels somehow. So I instead decided to go for this design where I just have a ton of individual propeller blades, and they're kind of intersecting each other a little bit, but giving a quick test here. I seem to create a lot of thrust for a pretty compact size, so I decided to roll with those for now. And after I got that working, I wanted to start working on the plane part of the plane, or well, I guess the wings and the tail. Really what I wanted to do was make sure I had something that I knew could get into the air using a known good thrust source, which for that I'm going to use a powered wheel. And if I could prove that could at least get into the air, at least gave me a pretty good guideline of how fast I was going to need to get the engine to spin, and also exactly how probable this was. So I expanded out the wing panels, and they didn't seem to create that much drag, but you can see the big wing panel does seem to be falling slower than the small one, so I was hoping that meant that I was going to at least create a decent amount of drag and get myself in the air. So I added in a ballast to the back of the plane, and then braced it up to the back, and I'll use this to create my tail. And now giving it a quick test here, the propeller can spin up using the engine. Not that fast, because it's kind of moving around a lot since I'm dragging it. And I put it in the air and just wanted to see how well it glided. And the answer to that was poorly. It just seemed to fall straight down. I was getting very suspicious that the wings were doing literally nothing, but I decided to press on, and what I did was replace the output of the engine with a powered wheel like I said I was going to, again just temporarily, so I can create a known good thrust source and hopefully get this in the air. I also added in a tail using these small wing pieces, and it kind of seemed to work out fine. So what I did is I added in a wheel to the back of the plane, and this is going to act as a counter rotation to the front propeller, so as that spins it creates a lot of torque on the body of the plane, so if I have this other wheel in the back that creates an opposite torque, it ends up cancelling out and hopefully doesn't rotate at all. Now I was going to mess with that a lot more later, for now it's in there so that I can account for its mass since I knew I was at least going to have to add that in the future. And after I got everything pretty good, I ended up adding some wheels to the end of the spark plugs and then rotated them, and tried to get it in the air. Now the propeller was spinning way too slow right now, so I barely got any speed on the ground. So I turned its speed up to 5 times, and once I did that, it seemed to be actually moving quite fast, fast enough that it would tip the plane. So it hopefully gave me a bit more control. What I was going for was sort of a weird design for pitch control. The idea is I'm going to rotate the entire blades instead of having control surfaces. Now this is definitely less efficient since as I rotate the entire blade it creates a lot more drag, but I also save a bit on weight and I figured the weight was probably more important than the blades. And at this point I was almost certain that the wings were doing absolutely nothing. So as you can see here, I'm able to go straight in the air using only the thrust from the propeller, but I'm not able to travel horizontally, which just made me think that the wings were definitely not doing anything. So I deleted those, and instead what I was going to do was use these small wing panels, which actually seemed to be producing some amount of drag. So after adding those into long chains of ballast like this, I gave it a quick test here, and you can see I can still tilt them just like I could with the other blades, and instantly this thing goes into the air. And I'm able to easily control it by tilting up and down the blades. And to conserve even more weight, I got rid of a lot of the ballast I didn't need, and braced the wings together, and it seemed to fly even better after I did that. So now that I had a plane that was getting into the air, I wanted to get the engine to start powering this, and my first thought was to actually use a second engine to rotate the first engine, and hopefully double the speed of the crankshaft, and I was thinking that may get me somewhere. Now it's a little hard to explain, it's a lot easier to see. And here I have that test going. So as the back engine ends up rotating, it's pinned in place so it's totally static, but the first engine gets spun up by the back engine, and I was hoping the crankshaft of the first engine was going to rotate in the same direction and add to its speed, but they seem to want to rotate in opposite directions. Here you can actually see the crankshaft from the front engine is rotating counterclockwise, while the one from the back engine is rotating clockwise. So instead of adding, they're actually subtracting slightly. Now this was definitely confusing, and it seems like I gave up on that pretty soon, but I tried working on it for like 20 minutes and it just did not get anywhere. So I instead rejigged this while I still had both the engines so that they rotate in the same direction, and the crankshafts are locked together. Once I did that, I was going to try using my gear ratio design again, because I was thinking maybe the problem with that is I just didn't have enough power to drive it. So after hooking everything up, I gave it a quick test run here, and I also increased the size of the propeller, I think I doubled it. And even so, I still wasn't getting any real speed, and the crankshafts were still rotating painfully slow. So I deleted what I had since it just was not working, and I tried to conserve a bit more weight by using only a single bracing piece to connect the tail of the plane to the body, and I also decided to refine the propeller. And what I started to do was move the blades further out from the center of the propeller. Now this seems a little weird, but by doing this, I was hoping to get more linear velocity on all of the propeller blades, and this would hopefully make them move faster through the air, and therefore I'd be able to generate more speed. Now in just a simple test here, it didn't really seem to hold together, but shockingly it actually produced a lot of thrust by using this glitch. I 
I don't understand this game sometimes. But by increasing the mass of the center blade, what this did was increase its strength a bit as well, and it seemed to stay together. So I had to move the wheels down a bit more since the propeller was so big that it was going to just run straight into the ground. And it produced a good amount of thrust, but I figured we could do better than that. And I moved the propeller blades even further from the center of the propeller. I think I doubled it again, ish. And once I did that, at this point I deleted the wheels because there's really no point in having them, since this thing was just so big. I mean, the propeller blade was so big. I needed to really start in the air. And I had the same problem as before, the propeller blade just went crazy, and in the slow-mo it actually looks pretty interesting. But I increased the mass of the center ballast one more time, and once I did that, I just spun it up and tried to give it another run. And shockingly, it actually started to move forwards, and even more shockingly, I was actually able to keep it in the air for prolonged periods of time. Now, it wasn't perfect, since I still had no way of rolling the plane from one side to the other, so the stuck started going in circles like this, but the fact that it was producing any thrust at all, and the fact that it was actually somewhat controllable, was a pretty good start. So I moved the two horizontal wings on the tail out just one block, and then added in steering hinges. And I was hoping by doing this to be able to tilt them back and forth, and be able to create a little bit of roll with the plane, and steer it where I wanted to go. Now this didn't really seem to work at all, and in fact whenever I tried to tilt them, it kind of worked as an air brake, and then slowed me down enough that it just fall straight to the ground. So I moved them out a little bit further, and replaced them for those bigger wings as well, but this seemed to throw off the balance of the plane a lot, and just didn't seem to get me anywhere. So going for another test here, I was thinking maybe the problem was that instead of having them on the back of the plane, I need to have them on the main wings. So I made the last two blades on the wings able to tilt from side to side, just like we saw before, after just manually spinning up the propeller. It kind of seemed to work, but it definitely was having a very small effect, and in fact on video here, it's not even like noticeable at all. It just seemed like it may have been happening while I was flying. But finally, I moved out the entire wings, and instead put those steering hinges further into the plane, so that they're right on top of the steering hinges that control the pitch of the plane as well. And this seemed to totally work, but the wings now were able to fold in and kind of create a U. So I used a couple swivel joints like this, and then braced them to the body of the engine, and once I did that, it seemed to secure the wings a lot better, and I was able to roll the plane wherever I wanted. You can see here I'm able to stop myself from going to the left, and I straightened myself out. Now I put in a camera to the back of the plane as well, and this gives me a good chase cam. It makes it a lot easier to fly this since I don't have to constantly move my mouse around so I'd be able to stay at the back of it. And I put in a motor wheel to the front of the plane, and what this does is when it spins up, it rotates the propeller in the opposite direction, and that's what starts it up, because normally I'd have to crank it over using the drag tool, but instead I can just use the motor wheel to start it up and it's a lot easier. There you just saw a test of me starting at ground level, and going up quite a distance. And this proves that I'm actually producing thrust with this and I'm not just gliding where I want to. And here I have a nice montage, few shots I got. Here you can see I crashed, and the engine's still rotating, so it's actually pretty strong, all things considered. And here I normally don't record the audio, but I thought the sound of the engine was important to capture, so I just got a shot here of it. So guys, thanks for watching. This video took a lot longer to make than I was expecting, mostly because I had a lot of engines that just didn't quite pan out. One of them was a Wankel engine, I have that on screen now. I have some ideas of how to improve this, and I actually think they may just work, but I'll have to revisit that at some point in the future. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask below. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and otherwise, until next time.